from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today at the Compass on the 27th of September, I'm here to spread the message of freedom. I have one special announcement I'd like to make that on the 5th of October, on a Saturday, uh, we're gonna have our next freedom gathering hosted at a new wonderful place called Fala. This place is in Saka Bottom, historic Saka Bottom. And for me, this is one of the places that was uh, decided my selection of moving here to Richmond, actually. You know, before I had any friends, the only thing I had much of an interest in any particular city were, you know, were there enough ban abandoned buildings for me to explore? <laughs> Um, and uh, or, or is there enough uh, places for me to roam and to, uh, to find a lot of hidden gems like abandoned cemeteries, abandoned Renaissance Fair parks, uh, abandoned cities. And for me, uh, this is my uh, wasteland city dream come true. You know, a few years ago before I moved here to Richmond. And also I've been going to a lot of nightclubs in the past and I found uh, one in particular that, I, that never really made me feel uh, I guess like an alien visitor, like an outsider, taking notes and trying to to see how you're supposed to socialize. And uh, this is I've never felt had that feeling at this particular place. Uh, this is a place that you know they pretty much have no, never had any problems there. You know, only one rule pretty much uh, that they have is no assholes allowed. Pretty much, uh, great ambiance, great atmosphere, great friends, great music, great dance floor to dance on, and that's that's where our night our uh, freedom gathering is going to be hosted at. And so yeah. I, Please, uh, come on out. This is going to be uh, one, of, one of the biggest freedom gatherings we're going to have yet. And, you know, thank you for the uh, follow-up management and for the uh, follow-up members as well for encouraging us, for supporting us. And with that, I look forward to seeing you there. So, see you at the victory party and take good care. So that's the hidden violence behind this matrix, behind government. That this organization only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus a plurality of non-violent solutions that you and I already share. Well, um, the violence is a uh, last means. There's, of course, as, as you know, a few steps beforehand, a few warnings, if you want to call them that. But eventually, violence is the ultimate. one of the ultimate yeah. options they utilize. And kidnapping um, is usually just jailing, but okay. They're different ways to turn but, but, yeah. but yes, yes, essentially, yeah. what you think is correct. Yeah, um, all right, so, so, uh, so this more position though that you and I already share, against using violence to solve problems, and that's called anarchy. Uh, like in science, right? Anions and cations, and means without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. Uh, we can still have rules, it doesn't mean without rules. But government though, they have a monopoly on rules. They have a monopoly on law. And not so much that they have a monopoly on courts, on judges, on security, on roads, on currency, on delivering pieces of paper, first class mail. They have a monopoly in these services that no one's allowed to compete against. You don't even have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, withdraw your payments, right? and again, or have the freedom to compete and provide a better service that's not gonna be harmful and abusive to the consumer, to you. Um, well, anarchy, there's this, uh, connotation has where it's chaotic yeah um, and the only answer as far as human society is created to that was government not necessarily a monopoly in a sense but because in this case at least we choose who most of the time we choose who our legislators lawmakers are not necessarily who opposes them but who choose who those people are hence voting etc 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 so I can't hardly agree with you fundamentally speaking you're speaking Objectively, though. Objectively speaking, you're speaking the truth, but there's a few areas where um, it's not as cut and dry as black and white. You know? Okay, okay. Uh, l l so let's let's illuminate some of these particular areas. Um, but you re do recognize that the government first do does have a monopoly on law, right? So yes, yes. Yeah. That's so I'm because sure. of that, you don't have a polycentric legal system. So what I'm trying to say, without the government monopoly on these services, you can have a free market that can provide these services, but in a voluntary basis, not in cohesive nature that they have, but we're in one in where you can choose who can provide you that service best. No. Right? Um, you know, one second, please. Yeah, yeah, please, please, of course. Hello? Hello? Hey, um, I'm on the campus compass. Can you come here? Hey, good to see you. Hello. He's finding a friend? Okay, I'm talking. Yeah, he's finding a friend. Like three, four minutes. <laughs> I'm over. Yeah. I just stopped by. I talked to him real quick. I'm coming out. Bye. <laughs> I mean, it was, yeah, yeah. Sounds like you're. I'm phoning a friend for this conversation. Yeah, it's an interesting <laughs> conversation right now. Yeah. So I'm saying you can still have security, you can still have law, you can still have Georgia's police. You can have a judge, so of course you're paying their salary, but he's not going to throw you into court for contempt of court because he doesn't like what you're wearing, right? So that's the thing. They have a binding monopoly on these services. You don't have the freedom to cancel or unsubscribe. Like in, in a free market, like Netflix tried to raise their prices overnight last year, and people are like, forget that, cancel or unsubscribe, go to Hulu, right? 
So that's what will happen in a free market society. These services can't be abusive. At the moment they try, they'll go bankrupt. Well, in, in a sense, are we already living in a free market society? We are not. In, in, in a sense, aside from government regulation in certain industries. It's a state-controlled market. Uh, for example, uh, corporations will cease to exist without government. All a corporation is, is just a piece of paper backed and enforced by government that allows the individual to escape personal liability for their actions. You Can know? you give me an example of uh, Yeah, the oil spill off the coast of Alaska, the CEOs are responsible for those actions. They didn't lose their house, they didn't lose their money, they didn't, lose, they didn't go to jail, they didn't lose anything. Mm. As a corporation, you're able to offset that cost to limit the liability cap to your employees by lowering their salaries to the consumers by raising consumer prices. And that allows them to escape personal liability for their actions. So without government, so what, what exists today is a state-controlled market. Uh, it's, it's not a free market at all. A free market, by definition, would be uh, free from coercion. Would mean would involve actual real freedom of economic choice. Uh, so they've done a good job in a lot of these studies and textbooks here. You know, I was studying for Justice here as well at VCU. They'll say it's a free market-like policy. Actually, no, it's not. Either it is or it isn't, right? Either it is a free market where everyone has freedom of economic choice, or they don't. There's no well. Uh, some of it is in and some of it's not. Uh, I mean, you look at, uh, they even have a monopoly on distilled spirits, right? People think prohibition ended. No, they have a monopoly with the ABC. Uh, they have a monopoly on the warehouse distribution and retail sale of alcohol still. Uh, that's true. Right? So that's not a free market there. If it was a free market, you could buy it all under the same roof. Freedom of competition, a lot of different ways, cheaper alcohol. Well, that's what I was talking about. It's not yeah. just a black one, like how do you do the gray area. In this example of alcohol, it's illegal as we're being the consumer, but it's under regulation. Right. So that's what I was talking about. It's more of a gray area. But that's not a free market then. In a free market, you can still have regulations. And you'll have like uh, like eBay regulates itself without a government, right? If a bad business provides a bad service, bad product doesn't come on time, they're rated down. They're socially ostracized. But anyone can still have the freedom to compete, right? You can still have a accreditation system as a business. Hey, four stars out of five. You know, we came here, we reviewed. You can still have Yelp, right? Different ways to kind of rate and see as a consumer. You make you have consumer reports, right? Uh, but what government does with that monopolization of regulation then is uh, that that uh, discriminates against the poor to compete. And licenses and permits, you know, that you can't compete with bigger corporations to begin with. Uh, like, in, like in the state of Washington, $600 is to have the permission to cut hair. Well, as you said, well, well certain, some um, markets are more free than others. For example, alcohol isn't all that free because uh, ABC stores, etc. In, in, yeah. in this state. But as you said, eBay and companies like that online are more free, in a sense. So. In my opinion, it's more of a gray area than black or white still. Right. Uh, well, you can't say though taxation is uh, voluntary. Uh, in this country. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they could send Wesley Snipes into a cage for three years for not paying his taxes. They could certainly send anyone else into a cage, right? Definitely. Until, well, uh, unless you can debate it for a few years. If you could try to, right? And I don't want anyone to do like a Logan's run and <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> try to escape. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's, that's the direction I want to go through. You know, I still want these services. I still want these needs to be met. But I want to do it on a voluntary basis. I want to go in a free and voluntary society where we can have the freedom to choose. Well, how would you think this would properly be implemented? Peacefully, Peacefully right, right. implemented in this country. Ex yeah. Uh, over the next, I don't think a while, maybe like, I don't know, seven years? If yeah, actually, yeah, yes, yes. So I give it between like five to 15 years before it could actually be done. Uh, you look at Detroit, and this is what happens when government runs anything. Uh, it controls any kind of city. The fun unfunded liabilities, the unsustainability of these government services. You can't keep stealing everyone's wealth to fund these services. Anytime you have a monopoly on anything, the cost always goes up and the quality always goes down. I mean, that's why you'll never have social security when it's time for you to retire. Probably not, right? Uh, I mean, that's why uh, USPS is $16 billion in debt. The cost of rise of stance prices has increased over 150%. Uh, but in a free market, freedom of competition is the complete opposite. Well, the thing about social security is it wasn't intended to be a long-term thing. It just kind of went along that way as history went along but yeah well that's the thing in the beginning that's what politicians will do they'll sell you this great idea and it sounds good in the beginning but they don't tell you the true cost like we're talking about violence has a it can be effective way to solve problems in the now but it has long-term consequences so in the now back then during the 60s when they implemented this uh, particular service into everyone uh, the long-term consequences is not really adding up the calculations that actually is going to be un unsustainable that in the later and the now in the future where you and I are living in that we'll never have that Right, those economic calculations that didn't, you know, that politicians have to worry about. It's not going to be in office eight years from now, right? Sir, uh, real quick, absolutely soon, but yeah. One, um, what do you hope to intend by doing these uh, 
conversations? Uh, to show people to, to eliminate the, I guess, the, the monopoly on the services the government has, to start thinking outside the box. Uh, you look at Detroit, again, the accessibility where it collapsed, there's this guy, like, police response time is over an hour, there's this guy providing real service of security. These neighborhoods are paying for it, and he's never thrown anyone into a cage for a victimless crime. Uh, mass transit is shut down, there's this guy who bought four buses, painted them to reflect the geographic region of Detroit. These buses have Wi-Fi, music, BYOB, because there's no more state monopoly in law to enforce it. And these buses will pick you up wherever you are, call them, text them, no government politically centralized planning routes. So that's what I mean. In the, in the free market solution, creative, but enjoyable, you know, different ways to kind of explore creativity and, and to explore different needs to be met. Well, one thing, uh, someone told me this. Yeah. Very rarely do you probably change someone's opinions or viewpoints through an argument conversation. Typically it has to be shown, you know. Right. Human beings were visual learners, I suppose. Yeah. Anyway, sir, uh, it's a pleasure your, to meet your you. name? Cal. My name is Cal. Cal Musa. Musa, pleasure yeah. to meet you. I'm Musa. a policy major, so. You are? Oh. <laughs> Interesting. I'm, okay, let me ask him. Yeah. Anyway, um, well, let, let me give you some pamphlets. You might thoroughly enjoy this. Then. So that's the head advice behind this matrix, behind this organization, behind government, and that it only knows how to solve problems the one way, singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that us three here already share. All right. Um, so what are your thoughts and comments on that? I suppose it's alternative solutions? Yeah, the alternative solution would be, um, so this more projection that us three already share against using violence to solve problems, that's called anna. Like uh, in science, anions and cations, and means without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. So you look what government is objectively, you have a monopoly, you have a monopoly on services, you have a monopoly on law, you have a monopoly on courts, on judges, on security, on roads, on currency on first class mail, that you don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, withhold your resources, or even have the freedom to compete and provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to the consumer, right? So that's, so that's what government is. They have a monopoly on, on these uh, services that they force upon you, and you have no freedom to, to give consent to, like Social Security. Before you were born, <laughs> You never signed, signed a contract. A yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was my prison. Uh, that's your uh, social security prison tattoo number, right? Yeah. Never consented to that. Never agreed to that. Still, you have to pay for it, and you'll never have that when it's time for you to retire, right? Uh, so you were asking about. Uh, I mean, do you have any other comments or thoughts? No, on I'm interested. Yeah. I just. Uh it's a problem, how do we solve it? All right, all right so the way you solve it, it's, uh, aside from realizing that change doesn't start in the White House in DC, it doesn't start in countries you've never been to, you know, it starts with ourselves at home and within our own community. And for me here, it starts with your own um, interpersonal relationships. Uh, it starts with kind of reaching out using a real voice. The government wants to say your voice is a piece of paper to chat, it's a lever that you use every four years apathetically, looking for parking, waiting in line, hiding in your confession booth, I mean your voting booth. And of course, when you step out and people say, who'd you vote for? You say, oh, how dare you? Right, and then you slap the I voted sticker in your shirt and nobody talks about it again for another four more years. So the solution really is to talk about it. It starts with their own interpersonal relationship, but you don't need to convince all of Richmond. Uh, you look at uh, Detroit last year, over uh, only 47% of all owner owners just stopped paying their property taxes uh, because they already filed for bankruptcy, but the thing is government stopped providing those services. Right, you know, the police response time to 911 calls is over an hour. But there's this guy who created a, a real business of security for these neighborhoods and crime rates have dropped down. These, these neighborhoods are voluntarily paying for this service. He's not throwing anyone into a cage for a victimless crime, right? Mass transit there has shut down. And so this, this other person bought these four buses, painted them to reflect the geographic region of Detroit, and these buses will pick you up wherever you are. Call them, text them, no politically centralized planning routes. These buses also have Wi-Fi. These buses also have music. These buses also have BYOB, because there's no longer a monopoly on law to enforce, nice. right? So you'll find in a free market, a real free market, you have all these awesome creative solutions you can, you can provide to, to meet these needs. But when you have a monopoly on anything, it's like a monopoly on any kind of service. The cost always goes up and the quality always goes down because there's no freedom to compete. Like um, plasma screen TVs, right? A couple of years ago when you have a, a market of competition, they cost several thousand dollars, right? But today you can buy a better version and have a, with just a few hundred bucks, right? right. If you look at the monopoly on first class mail, for example, uh, USPS, $60 billion of debt. Cost of stamps has risen over 150%. Uh, just this week in Huffington Post, they're, they're thinking about actually raising another three cents, right? So, and people say, well, what, what are your thoughts on that? It's like, it's not like you have a choice, <laughs> right? It's not like there's any other business service you can go to to, to deliver your mail to, that's right? Enough. Yeah, uh, so that's so that's the that's the answer. Uh, we only need several thousand anarchists to kind of affect a paradigm shift. So, unitedly, we can all say we're, we're done. You know, pay no more property taxes. Uh, because these are the ideas government doesn't want anyone to know. Right, they hide the truth of the relationship with what really exists right now. 
to us, to them, we're nothing but tax things, right? To them, they're nothing but political rulers. And that's why they, harp, they, they do their best to try to hide that nature of the relationship. That's why they say, you're not allowed to steal, but we're gonna go ahead and call it taxes. You're not allowed to murder, but we'll call it organized war, right? And they'll call it a war on drugs, you know, but I've never seen a cannabis being handcuffed and thrown into a cage. It's actually a war on people, right? So that's, so that's the exposure. So when you have uh, several thousand anarchists, uh, when you push that out there and the awareness is out there, that's how the, the whole house of cars, you know, starts to crumble behind the government. You know, they can't continue lying anymore. Um, and so that's how we get there to a free and voluntary society. We saw in 2011, though, how the government you know, cracks down pretty hard on any organized resistance. Right. What happens when those few thousand anarchists are in a cage along with 1.6 other million? Right, right, right. All right, that's a great, I mean, that's what the National Defense Authorization Act is for. Uh, that's what the Patriot Act is for. That's what the NSA is about. Uh, they're putting their chess pieces in move because they're going to realize, like, the dollar in your pocket has lost over 97% of its value. It only has 3% left to go. You know, that hurts the poor the worst. You're going to have a lot of people rioting, a lot of people protesting. Uh, I'm part of an organization called Liberate RBA. Uh, it's a non-political organization. Just pretty much, I mean, this is a movement that can take place anywhere. You don't, not, you don't have to be all camped out in one particular area where it's nice and easy for the government to find you and to, like, throw you into a cage. I like that. Uh, oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and so this is a movement that can take place anywhere. At a cafe, uh, we, we do this at houses. We do this uh, on the streets. They, the one thing that can't stop us is just simply talking to each other. But they can't stop us if we do advocate for violence, right? They want yes. us to do violence. No mm, direct action. Right, yeah. They want us to sit on those capital steps just so they could kidnap us and throw us into a cage and w waste our time for another couple months, right? How much freedom can you spread when you're in a cage? Uh, not a whole lot, right? So that's it, that's, and that's what they're betting on. They're betting on us to be violent. They're betting on us to use violence. But the thing is, that's how they know how to use that best, and they want people to do that. So then this, so this is a nonviolent revolution. This is a, a more a way to kind of transition peacefully outside of the monopoly. And then when the exposure is out there, when people know the truth, they're like, who's going to be alien? And they realize what we're about. It's like we're, we're advocating for nonviolent solutions. Right? We advocate for peaceful parenting. Who's against peaceful parenting? Right? So, I mean, or so like in principle, for example, you can't just be against state violence, but the violence we do to each other is okay. Right? The violence that's on the children is okay. You have to be unilaterally. Yeah, violence. you have to be universalized. Uh, and that becomes uncontrollable. Right? So, for example, like if you spank your children, only teaches yeah, them when they grow up that violence is a way to solve problems. Right? Sure. So, kind of universalizing that principle. I mean, government is really is a projection of a lot of that anger. You know, when a child kind of grows up and they get hit, you know, don't talk back because I said so. Respect the authority, the title. And that's what government is. Don't question your government, don't question your political rulers, uh, unless you be labeled a, uh, you know, not a patriot, right? You're unpatriotic. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, well, I got pamphlets if you guys would like. Yes, give me lit. <laughs> hey! Oh man! Wow, it's been a while. Spring. There you go. Yeah, we have uh, actually a meeting tonight, 7 p.m. Meet a lot of other Richmond anarchists. If you guys are uh, free for that. But if not, it's okay. Maybe. Uh, huh? This have an address on it. Uh, well, let me put the address in it right now. It's called the uh, Nevermore Anarchy Garden. It's on uh, 16 24th Avenue. Yeah. Yeah, Richmond. Can't miss it. Uh, well, I'm gonna put my number in case he gets lost. You hitting that uh, as a Patriot Act rally in October? Oh no! Please enlighten me more about that. 26th in DC, the FF organized it. Yeah? yeah? The FF? What's that? The FF, Electronic Frontier Foundation. Okay. Uh, no, never heard of them. Uh, uh, they do lots of like copyright law, internet rights, that sort of thing. Okay, uh, interesting. So like, inter um, I guess intellectual property and such. Yeah, exactly, but uh, it's a hundred different organizations all united and uh, they're delivering a petition for Congress right. to uh, basically s for the a damper on the Patriot Act. Right, 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 right. Kick out prison and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, SIPA, PUPA, any other three little four acronym words that uh, kind of threaten the internet. Exactly. Uh, yeah, no, I'm all about uh, against all that stuff, too. So, no, my name is Cal. Nick. Nick, pleasure to meet you, Nick. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you, Nick. You guys go to follow? Uh, yes. Yeah? Uh, we're hosting. How could you tell? <laughs> we're actually um, hosting our next Freedom Gathering at Fallout next Saturday. Uh -huh. Kick ass. Yeah. Uh, you have to be a member? Uh, you have to be a member, but they 
they are allowing us to like be a start, go start early, so anyone who's 18 enough can kind of stay there and afterwards, so we're sponsor everyone there. Okay, sweet. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's starting to move around into different areas around Richmond. Yeah, what time did you say? Uh, well, we'll give the information. Well, this one today starts at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll provide all the information, the flyers for uh, fallout later tonight too. Sweet. So I'm not sure that we can make 7 p.m. today. No, I mean, wait, it's, it's till midnight, so you guys can come oh. in any time. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you've got four ten and five thirty, but. We can probably grab like a... No, because remember we, were, we had buttons for between. Right, but. okay. Uh, well, come on over whenever you guys come. Yeah, so like an email address, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, the website's on there, email address, all of that is on Sweet. there. Yeah, if we can't make it tonight, yeah. we'll hit send out the email as well. Sounds good, man, sounds good. It's a cool. pleasure to meet you, man. Yeah, same. Keep on doing what you do. Thank you, man. Support. Absolutely, absolutely. Have a good one. You too. Take good care, guys. So that's the head and violence behind government, behind this matrix. This organization only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Uh -huh. So, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I never thought about it like that. Right? It puts stuff into a different perspective, just because you're like so used to following the rules. Yeah. That's yeah, trying to put all the puzzle pieces, yeah. all the connections in there and just outline it and so exactly what it is graphically. Yeah. Um, so this more position then that you and I already share against using violence to solve problems, yeah. that's called anarchy. Right. Like uh, in science, anions and cationions, an means without, archy means rulers. Uh -huh. So like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political uh -huh. rulers. So we can still have rules, right. but what government has is a monopoly on law. Right. right. They have a monopoly on security, on judges, on courts, on currency, on a lot of services that they force on you. Yeah. You don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, or withdraw your payments. You even have the freedom to compete and provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you, the consumer. Right. right? So that's where I want to go. I want to go to a free and voluntary society where we can have rich, diverse communities of preferences. An apartment complex is 420 friendly, one across the street, that's not. Right. right? Whatever you, at least you have real rules you can agree on, right? right. With government, you don't have a choice. Yeah, exactly. Right? I, at no point, do you remember ever consenting to the, I don't know, Social Security? No. No. <laughs> that was the first service they forced on you, right? And you have to pay for it and you'll never see a scrap of that when it's time for you to retire, right? Exactly. Thanks for sharing. Of course, my name is Cal. Joe, nice yeah, to meet pleasure you. Pleasure to meet you. I have pamphlets if you like. I guess more, uh, Digest. Thank you. Of course, of course. Have Take a good day. You as well.